we've been exploring the four great endeavors which give us guidance about how to best relate to the wholesome and unwholesome states of mind in order to keep moving in the direction of less stress and more ease of well-being. That's the name of the game. So the four great endeavors are these. When the wholesome is around, keep it around. When the wholesome is not around, bring it around. When the unwholesome is around, find a way to release it, to let it go. And the last one, the one I'd like to talk about this morning, is when the unwholesome is not around, don't invite it in. Don't invite it in. <clears throat> Hafiz says, you carry all the ingredients to turn your life into a nightmare. Don't mix them. <laughs> Yet so often we do. <clears throat> we do out of habit. We do out of not seeing or seeing clearly the unwholesome or not feeling clearly the stress. And therefore, inadvertently, we mix them. When thoughts and feelings of anger, ill will, irritation, fear, guilt, worry are around, we aren't happy. We're stressed. And when anger, ill will, irritation, anxiety, fear, guilt, and worry are not around, well, at least we're not not happy. At least we're a little less stressed and a little more at ease. But it's easy to miss this moment when the unwholesome has just left, when the heat of an argument has dissipated, when the anxiety eases, or when the fright of fear backs off just a bit. These are moments that are hard to see, but these are moments that are, are to be seen and appreciated because these are moments of relief. Noticing these moments benefits our well-being. They are a resource for the heart and a relief to this body, heart, mind. Less stress feels like this. Notice when the unwholesome abates. Notice, bring attention right here because it's for your welfare. It's also easy to miss the absence of unwholesome states because our human minds are conditioned to get stuck in the negativity. Hafiz says, you carry all the ingredients to turn your life into a nightmare. Don't mix them. Yet so often we do. Out of the human mind's habit to focus on and give attention to the negative, as opposed to the positive. <clears throat> so how do we not invite the unwholesome back in? Well, one way is to start to notice when mindfulness starts to flag. When it, it begins to drift a little into the sort of mindful moments, which it will. Not because you're bad, not because you did it wrong, but because nothing lasts not even mindfulness, it will come and go. And because mindfulness is a skill we are developing, we are learning how to be mindful and learning how to be mindful more often. We are not continuous, nor should we expect ourselves to be. Let everything be practice and let the practice be messy because it is. That said, these sort of mindful moments are by nature hard to see. When mindful attention grows casual, dull, unfocused, disinterested, or drifty, or if it starts to slip into Susan's likes or dislikes, these perceptual shifts don't often register fully, not yet anyway. And it is important to understand 
that these habits of our mind to grow tired, bored, casual, less clear, or get caught up in our own stories, these are precursors to going down the rabbit hole of unwholesome mind states and discontent. <clears throat> I might be dating myself here, but I used to love Lost in Space when I was a kid. <laughs> and there was the robot who would always go flailing his arms, danger, danger, Will Robinson, danger, danger. <laughs> and that's the image that I like to insert right there. Right there when the mind gets a little dull, a little casual, when it gets tired or bored, because right there is where the trouble begins. If, atten if attention continues down the path of dull and unfocused, it's more likely to move from a neutral position to a negative one. And it'll keep going right through the stop sign and end up in ugly town, right smack in the middle of an ugly town. It goes like this. I'm on the breath, I'm with the breath. It's interesting, it's all interesting. It's interesting until, until it's not. Until it's not, and I drift into a little daydream and the mind then grabs onto a whiff of fear that I felt yesterday. And then it begins to recollect those thoughts I had yesterday, reliving them. Now, all of this, all of this, because the mind grew dull, just that. It grew dull and it went down that little rabbit hole. So we want to notice that this is what it's going to do. The good news, however, is that we can train ourselves to see these moments as signposts, as cues to simply reinvigorate mindful, caring attention. That's all. Because when mindfulness is engaged, it's more like a forest ranger in a fire tower surveying a swath of land for signs of potential danger. It's more like a sheep herder carefully tending to the flock so that none go astray or get hurt. In the Tibetan traditions, um, they describe mindfulness like a scout running ahead to suss out safety and direction. And this is why we, Bill and I, put so much emphasis on noticing when the mind grows casual in its attention. Mindfulness keeps an eye out for signs of potential danger, for unwholesome mind states, for stressful thoughts and feelings that are lurking in the shadows. And it looks over the whole territory, body, breath, heart, mind. And it looks out for your well-being. Hafiz says, you carry all the ingredients to make your life into a living nightmare. Don't mix them. And still, no matter what we do, we'll find ourselves caught up in the middle of the unwholesome in the middle of stressfulness. And when you notice, when you wake up and see it, take a breath, breathe, withdraw attention from that line of thinking and come back in here and reset. Just reset. Good job. No fuss, no muss. This is great practice. Just reset. Likewise, when mindfulness flags, when attention grows casual, when interest has grown thin, refresh the posture of mindfulness as often as is needed because it's for your welfare. 